It is another edition of the On The Mic Podcast, and we're just about a week away from my favorite event of the year. Bellator goes back to Dublin, Ireland, and a rematch uh, that has been kind of in the makings for over five years now. She is back, coming off her win over Leah McCourt. First time ever on the show. I'm trying not to be a fanboy and geek out because I'm so happy to talk to her for the first time. The one and only Sinead Cavanaugh. Sinead, how are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm all good. That was a nice inter- introduction there. Well, it, go- it goes down from here. So after that, it's just, this is going to be bad question <laughs> after bad question. Uh, first and foremost, obviously, the knee injury. Um, a lot of fighters, pro athletes, that can that can completely change them, whether it's an easy recovery, a, a hard recovery. How are you doing physically and mentally coming into this fight against Janae Harding? Um, physically, I'm in top shape. <laughs> um, it took me a while to get to get into training mentally, like because I thought of my knee being the way it is, like um, after the surgery. But I've I've been in awkward situations, and I feel positive about it now. What was the hardest part in getting back to the gym? Is it not trusting your knee? Is it just kind of a, a mental roadblock you had to get through? What was the hardest part to get back into the gym? Um, my knee itself was keeping me back. Um, I could tell me ACL, but I completely tear me ACL, but I tore me MCL as well. I had two sprains, so I couldn't get surgery until April um, because it was so swollen, like. And then I got the surgery and then like it was it was just a, a long road to um to go back training. Um no, I wanna like, get- just, just the rehab itself, like you know, it was taking me a while to it was baby baby steps like no, I wanna give you a lot of props because here in the States, obviously we've got the other pro sports as every country has their other pro sports, but like in football here, I know it's soccer you know in europe but in in american football here when the when these athletes tear their acls or their mcls they could be out for over a year uh they're slow in their rehab they're slow in their progression shanae you're going to be fighting almost (laughs) a year exactly a year to the day day. (laughs) Yeah, yeah which is crazy to me i mean we have seen fighters come back from other stuff but the acl and the way you fight needing your movement needing your knees needing your legs and, and just the intensity in which you fight every single day when you've been back in the gym have you thought about that because yes you got the win and I, and I can't imagine what you were going through in the fight against Leah McCourt with the pain that you were going through. But you, you kept going. You picked up the win. But have you thought about it's going to be a year exactly to the day? Yeah, yeah I have. It's literally, um, and Bellator was meant to be on the 24th, but then he switched it to the 25th. So it was like, it was meant to be, I think. Um, um, and yeah, that was my goal. I literally said, like, I want to be back in the February card, and I set myself a goal to do that. And I've, I've literally done it. So um, I'm, I'm proud of myself to get back in there. Like, people probably won't believe it until they see me in the cage. But um, I'm well, ready for this. I'm ready for this. Well, uh, I think you're the reason they they moved it to the 25th. I don't know if you had any conversations with the <laughs> with the higher ups, but I think if you walked in the room and said it has to happen on the 25th, I'm pretty sure you made it happen. Yeah, but I, I, I do say this not just because you're here, but because I truly do mean this sincerely. Uh, not only are the Bellator Dublin events one of my favorite events of the year, but you're one of my favorite fighters. I, I know I don't look it. I don't look it, but I am Irish. <laughs> I'm actually born on St. Patrick's Day. So I, oh, I love, Danny. and I'm trying to do as much coverage of this event as possible. And I wanted to start it off this week's coverage with talking to you. And really, because I can sit here in the States and I can watch it on Showtime and on the on the YouTube prelims, and I can feel the atmosphere. You can hear the crowd. But Sinead, can you take me through the arena and what the crowd, and, and uh, especially a fighter so beloved as yourself, what that moment is like when you're in the cage, when you're walking to the cage, just the night that will be Bellator 291 on February 25th. Yeah, goosebumps. It's surreal. <laughs> like, it's just everyone is cheering and um, everyone drunk and cheering. And it's, um, you're walking now, you're in the background, in the backstage, and 
like so much of mixed emotions are going through your head like um you're nervous you're excited you're ready to get in there to show everyone um your talent you know and then you, you walk in and it's, it's just it's like a, a gladiator vibe like everyone is just going crazy like um and when you get in there yeah it's uh, i try to block everything out like outside the cage so um I just focused on my opponent then. Well, for yourself, and obviously you've had some high profile fights. I know things didn't go the way you wanted them to against Chris Cyborg. But uh in this in this atmosphere, when you're fighting in your home country and your home, you know, right there in Dublin, I know you try to block it all out, but just in the moment or or when you're looking at the moment, what does it mean to you to have everyone behind you to be fighting really for a country? that has to continue to need pro fighters like yourself kind of show everyone what you guys are truly capable of. And on top of that, being a female professional Irish fighter, a woman, you can send so many messages to all the women in your country. What does that mean to you to fight not only in your country, but kind of for your country as well? Oh, um, I missed, I miss fighting in Dublin. Um, for a few years, I was traveling and stuff, uh, fighting abroad. But then um, I haven't lost in Dublin. And um, it must be so. <laughs> Obviously, it, it's good for me to fight here. Um, and it is a different it's a different feeling, it's a different buzz about it. Um, and, yeah, you're just, you're just ready to put on a show for, for the crowds. Um, and and um, it's on the telly as well. And then... The girls to look up to um the likes of the the Irish fighters um and the women fighters like to look up to us and uh, see us that we you can do well and um that we'll put on put on the main event the co main event we can that we can do this and they can do it as well. I want to go back to this last fight and and I want to thank you for your time. I won't keep you too much longer. But the fight against Liam McCourt, we understand how high the stakes were. We understand what the atmosphere was like. Obviously, you wish you never got injured, of course. But if you go back to that moment in the fight, you know, trying to get back into the win column after the Chris Cyborg fight, the, the stakes were high. Everybody was talking about it, and the fight delivered. But in that moment, when you look back to what that fight meant to Bellator, what that fight meant to you, just how important and significant was that fight, given everything between you and Liam McCourt there? Oh, it was everything. It was, it was um, because I lost that fight to Chris. Like, um, I needed to win that to put me back up there for the title contender. You know, um, I needed to win this fight, and I got injured. Like, if I didn't get injured, I think it would have been a good momentum to keep fighting. Then it would have brought me there, but I got back, brought back a little bit. Um, and I'm ready to fight Janae and step up again, you know. But um, the Leah fight was, uh, yeah, it, I, I needed to win it. <laughs> I just needed to win that fight. Well, you showed a lot in that fight, not just heart, but from a skill set, talent wise as well. Uh, you mentioned Janae Harding, you'll be facing her at Bellator 291 on February 25th. This is a rematch. I know the last one was due to a, a you know a cut, but what what is going through your mind now that you've had such monumental fights after this fighting cyborg? Just like you said, you needed this win against Liam McCourt. I mean, you're in the rankings. You're right there. Your division is getting a little busy now. I'm, I'm sure that that excites you because people will start to go in different places. It'll set you up for the future. But just specifically, Janae Harding. You both of you are different fighters from the last time you you guys met, you ladies met. So, well, how do you approach a rematch against Janae Harding? Janae is tough, like yeah. you know, she's a tough girl. She's awkward and tough. Um, you know, uh, I'm I'm not going to go in for the kill this time. I'm just going to take take me time because of <laughs> I'm not fights when I do that. I get caught and I've I've. Uh, got caught early and stuff. So um, I'm going to take my time and I'm going to like try to pick her off. Like, you know, now saying that I might get stuck in and be cut to bits as well. You know, I like, that's the style of fighting I do. Um, 
But I'm, I'm going to, in my head, it's taking me time. So let's see, can I do that? Well, uh, I, I love it either way. I don't care if you're aggressive <laughs> right away or, or if you're taking your time. I love the way you fight. But let's talk about your division. Obviously, um, you have a fight with Janae. Kat Zingano is fighting Liam McCourt. I know we just had a fight announced for April in Hawaii. Uh, Pam Sorensen's getting busy. Your entire division's getting busy. How excited does that make you to know, like, things are moving, especially because I, I, I can't continue to express how awesome it is that you're literally fighting a, a year to the same day you, you, you got injured. I think it's incredible. But where you're at right now, I'm not even mentioning the rankings, but just where you're at in your career and the fact that your division is moving, you're mo more motivated than ever. How exciting is it in your division right now? Uh, yeah, very much so. There's new um, there's new women joining. Like there was like Sarah McMahon, she's fighting Arlene. I'm looking forward to that fight. I'm looking forward to seeing how Sarah, how Sarah does against Arlene because Arlene is a tough girl, you know. And um, the division is growing at the minute. Um, and I'm after it. Hopefully, I get my hand raised in this one, and um, I'm looking forward to to getting uh. And a, a, a quick turnaround if I, you know, early June would be great for me. It, it's like you do these interviews before because you know what I was going to ask you next. How busy <laughs> do you want to stay this year? I want to be busy this year because last year was just the one fight and the year before that was just the one fight because of the COVID situation and stuff. So, um, yeah, I've literally only have like literally two, three fights in the last two, three years, like two years. Like it's so I, I, I want to be busy this year. I try, I, tr I try to go the whole interview without mentioning your team and obviously some of your teammates, but you are at SPG Ireland. I, I have a lot of respect for John Cavanaugh and your entire team there. But obviously everyone knows, you know, the uh, the gorilla in the room, if you will, and Conor McGregor. And I'm just wondering, as you were working back through this injury, obviously Conor has had his own injury, but so much of what I think Coach John Cavanaugh, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, not only trains fighters on, you know, their skill set, but it's also their mentality and their emotions and how they handle things mentally. So what what was it that Coach Kavanaugh, maybe Connor, or anyone on your team did for you and how they helped you get through this to get back into the cage? Uh, <laughs> well, John said to me in the cage when I went and said, oh, my knee is gone. And he said, you got two, don't you? And I was waiting for a backhand, though, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, Connor said then that I was going to be OK and that it happened to him. You know, I'll get through it. You know, it's going to be it's going to be a tough few months, but I'll get through it. You know, John was checking in on me. Um, we went for he brought me to the hospital and stuff and he, we went for some. some lunch and all that like a few couple of times you know um just to try to see where see where my head was at you know um because it was it was tough like the injury was tough but um the yeah, the SPG, I love it I love SPG and um they've they've always been good to me and um yeah well I am hoping that Bellator comes back in September because obviously I can't make it out in February uh, I, I definitely need like the Irish welcome if I'm able to ever come cover a fight. I know you're working. You got Team Black Forge in now. Have Have you been there yet? How many times have you been there? <laughs> it's been a few. It's been a few late nights. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was gonna say it might be the hottest ticket in town to get in there. But uh, I, obviously, everything you're doing in, in Ireland and your career, we've talked about all of that. Uh, getting back in there, wanting to stay active. What makes where you're at in the, in this time of your career, what makes it so special to you? Because I, I think the only thing missing for you is just that title belt. And with the division being so busy, I don't think you're, you're, you're in a more perfect time. What would all that mean to you? Oh, that's, that's my dream. Like um, to be the world champion, like, um, and uh, <laughs> I don't think I, I'll, I'll be complete if I don't if I don't uh, win it. Like I need to have that before I retire, you know. Um, and maybe I can fight into me into me forties. Uh, you know, that's that's where it's going now. There's many MMA fighters that are fighting 
even 45 <laughs> Ramiro, you know. So um, hopefully I have a bit of time to uh, get that title. It means the world to me. Well, I, I can't imagine what it would mean, obviously, to you, but also, you know, your home country. I'm going to ask yeah. this to every single fighter just because – not that I want to be annoying, but because I want to learn how to do it correctly. Before I let you go, I mentioned earlier that my birthday is St. Patrick's Day. So straight from Ireland, straight from Dublin, can you please tell me how I'm supposed to correctly celebrate St. Patrick's Day birthday here in the States? <laughs> Easy. Get pissed. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. That's all I need today. I, I honestly say this when, and mean this when I say this, that uh, you, you're someone I've always wanted to talk to. I hope we can talk again. Uh, this Definitely. conversation has been everything for me. I'm super excited to see you return to the cage against Janaid Harding on February 25th in Dublin, Ireland. Sinead Cavanaugh, so happy to see you healthy. So happy you made the time for me today. Best of luck no and uh, hope we can talk after your fight. That's cool. No problem. Thank you. Thank you.